Hello, Aaron. Hello. Very nice to see you. I hope everything is working. Uh, yes, I see your presentation. And can you hear me? Aaron is, uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, great. No, everything is fine. And we are looking forward to your talk. Um, uh, if I understand it correctly, more marketing oriented um, uh, from an agency perspective. Thank you very much in front. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Aaron Brockhurst. I head up um, CSL website design. We are a um, design agency based in London. Um, I thought what I would do today is give you some background as to um, uh, why we picked um, Silver Stripe. Before that, those of you who remember, um, I last spoke in 2019. Um, you'll remember um, at the time we were debating, um, you know, where um, we were going to hold the next um, StripeCon. Tenerife was the one that we have managed to source this picture of Lars. Um, you know, from there, and who knew there was a pandemic coming? Hopefully, in um, 2022, we might make it to somewhere where there's some sun and we can all enjoy, um, you know, StripeCon where we're all together. Um, moving on, though, to tell you a bit about us as an agency, uh, we're a London based Silver Stripe partner. Um, we've been working with Silver Stripe since uh, around 2009. The first version we worked with was um, 2.3. Um, and we've worked with it since then. Um, we specialize in the experiential and engagement uh, environment, events, um, and banking and finance. Um, a lot of the stuff we do is about uh, user engagement with content, um, and we build web-based applications that enhance user experience, um, enable our clients' revenue generation opportunities, or reduce their costs and improve their brand positioning and awareness uh, around either their environments um, or online with their clients. Um, we also um, occasionally build a website or an e-commerce store but um, we're, f we're finding a lot more of the stuff that we do is around the application-based, um, you know, experiential um, user um, experience type space. Why did we pick Silver Stripe? Back in um, 2008, 2009, we pulled together a set of original um, criteria around a content management platform that we wanted to use for our clients. Um, the first thing that we, we knew, it had to be um, a technology that we understood. Um, our background uh, very much is in a Java J2E uh, environment. We um, are an enterprise content management background. Um, we also work within the LAMP stack, um, you know, the whole range of technologies. So typically, you know, at enterprise level, we'll work with any of the, the core, you know, main players, um, Documentum, Oracle, Sitecore, you know, some AEM from time to time. Um, as well as, um, you know, WordPress, um, you know, I was glad to see um, OS Commerce get mentioned earlier. Um, you know, back in the day, there were some great technologies that we used, not without uh, their own limitations, but very good technologies. So we knew for our own experience that what we picked had to be something that we understood. We didn't really want to start having to learn something new like Rails. Um, Ruby on Rails was making a big splash back, back in the day, um, and we knew we didn't want to be a .NET house. Um, so it had to fit somewhere in that space in the technology that we understood. Um, we also knew from our experience in the enterprise area that there had to be a separation between the data application and presentation layers. Um, those of you who work with WordPress will know that everything is stuck in the loop, that the logic and the templates are inherently linked, the data is caught in there, and doing anything in that space that separates the two is difficult. Um, Drupal, similarly, you know, you're caught in the node and everything's a node. Um, so, you know, there's inherent problems. And we knew that we had to have this separation between the three um, just to make life um, you know, more flexible for ourselves, really, and for our clients. Um, 
typically we knew we wanted something that was easy to upgrade and had an upgrade path. Um, it, you know, I don't know how many of you have seen um, the update this now button on a WordPress site. Um, it just, when you look at that and I see this screen, it fills me with fear because I know pushing that update now button is very much like setting fire to the world. And I know um, that at that point, I might as well blow up my site because quite often the site will blow up. You know, a WordPress update now, it will always break something. Um, and it doesn't play nice with the dev test UAT production type topology that we work with where we have separate environments. So we knew when it's saying that it was easy to upgrade with a good upgrade path. Um, and something that was easily extendable, you know, it, it's most of our work is based around building on something, building an application that does something specific for a client. And so what we wanted to do was to make sure that we could um, extend our applications um, and our content management system in a way that gave us flexibility to use the core, what was there, and build onto it. I don't really want to be reinventing the wheel, you know, to create users and members and permissions and roles and all of those things that come out of the box with Silverstripe. Um, I wanted to make sure that we had a stable CMS that did all that for us. Um, from a, a content editor perspective, it had to have um, a great UI that's easy to use. Um, a content editors would had to be able to create content easily, quickly, and it had to be given them something that gave them a preview and a publish. Um, I managed to find this screen from an old 2.3 site. Um, and this was very much what we were working with back then. It's, um, and our, we found our content editors loved how easy it was to do anything. It wasn't complex. It didn't involve blocks or pulling widgets together. It was literally enter the content on the page and push the, the save and the publish button. It made life really easy. Um, we asked ourselves, you know, did we want something that was open source um, or proprietary? Did we want um, a something that was um, free licensing or had a license fee? Um, and it's always a really difficult question. We're seeing now that even now with a lot of our clients, the question is still split. Do they want the proprietary huge license fee that comes down like Oracle or do they want open source? Government's made a big push in the last four or five years, which is really driving this open source um, question a lot further down and the companies down that open source line a lot more one of the things that we did know is that from an open source technology we wanted it to make be backed by a company that used it themselves um, i wanted to make sure that whoever was the owner of the open source technology was using it for their own projects because i knew that the problems we faced they would also be facing and so it's not stuck in some community um, where the project is you know falls apart because it's not supported and it's not used um, and the people who are using it no longer have a requirement for i'd already been caught with a number of projects like that where the project just fell apart because the original people who started it no longer had a requirement for it um, and there weren't enough people to take it forward we needed it to be suitable for all of our clients of all shapes and sizes, whether they're a one-man band business right the way up to a, um, an enterprise client um, and everyone in between. Um, we, you know, we work with businesses across the, the full spectrum. So we work with banks and government organizations at the very top and very small one-man band businesses at the bottom. And I needed, uh, we needed a CMS that worked with everyone that they could all use to do, you know, most of what they wanted to do. There's always niche case um, examples in there where it's not suitable. But for 80% of our clients, we wanted it to fit all, all um types of client. Um, we wanted to be able to go in and sell um, a product that we were proud of um, that they could then see and use very easily. So um, 10 years later, you know, it's been a, a long journey. We've gone through um, version two, version three, the pain of upgrade to version four. Um, uh, you know, we've finally in the throes of finishing off upgrading our uh, oldest version two site now um, that's run stably for 10 years um, and will very soon go out as version four um, and our criteria um, that we had originally 
still holds true. It's still a technology that we understand, you know, it still fits that and it still ticks all of the boxes um, all the way through. And our clients um, who use Silverstripe love it. Um, that they you, you like how easy it is to use and how we can quickly do um, whatever they want us to do with it, um, you know, to meet their requirements. So moving forward, our list um, does keep growing you know, our list of requirements as the world changes. So um, back in the, in the past, we always had multiple delivery channels, where it was always a client who had an intranet and um, an internet site or website. But we're seeing this now grow rapidly um, where they're looking to publish content out, not just to sites, but at, at apps. Um, and to search engines and to various different users who consume it in a myriad of different ways. And Silverstripe gives us the ability to provide all of those routes. I think we've got one client who out of their Silverstripe instance runs 35 microsites, um, all streaming content across all of the sites, but in different ways out to different clients with different consumption requirements. We're seeing, and Uncle Cheese talked about headless. Um, it's it, there's a lot of talk about headless at the moment, and for us, um, headless is not so much this, but it's becoming more this, um, where it's um, both headless and headed at the same time, where um, clients want the headless to, um, you know deliver their content at uh, applications, but also, you know, they want to use Silverstripe to generate content as well. Um, we're seeing greater integrations back in 2008, 2009. This would have been our um, CMS stack, uh, where we've got content editors creating content in the CMS and publishing out for visitors to consume. You know, over the years that moved so that we moved the uh, publishing out to a live server, so it was separate from the CMS, and we've seen some of that, whether it's either static published or, you know, published out to um, a version running on a different server where the editors get restricted access. Um, but these days we're seeing a Silverstripe as our central point of content. Um, where our editors are read, creating content um, and using it there for that for its primary purpose. Um, we're seeing that there's a greater interaction with uh, in-house applications pushing content into Silverstripe um, and other um, systems, you know, either pushing or pulling. So it's either user entered or it's generated from there. Um, we're also seeing we have a number of um, content generation systems where users generate video content or gaming content that's fed into, into our Silverstripe applications. We're then driving content back out from Silverstripe into either um, storage areas like Dropbox um, or CDNs across the board, you know, whether it's AWS, you know, Google, Azure, um, even out to um, video storage platforms like um, YouTube or Vimeo, um, Brightcove or Captura. Um, we're seeing a whole range of um, different um, delivery areas for uh, some of the more content type um, assets that go out from there. Um, and we're also delivering sites out either as static published sites, either uh, as headed Silverstripe sites or headless um, out to, um, you know, web applications from there. We're doing a lot more with mobile and interaction through real time um, applications like Ratchet, where um, it's Node um, and a lot of our gaming apps drive content through this way, through a uh, mobile app where people are scoring points and gaming in real time with content generated through Silverstripe um, and delivered out to their applications on their devices. Um, with using Silverstripe um, with EPOS, um, you know, to render those transactions backwards and forwards and at the same time, um, you know, do the MI and the reporting for it for user dashboards. Um, and then we've got, you know, new t coming technology like Alexa and Google Search and Solar and all the myriad of other things 
that are going into it. And then, you know, just to make it even more complicated, we're getting um, instances where we've got Cloudflare bolted on the top and we're using Cloudflare CDN or Jamstack um, and Silverstrike's pushing the content into Cloudflare for users to consume. So as you can see, you know, our world now is becoming um, horrifically more complex just in the nature of what clients ask us to do. Um, and Silverstripe is still our platform of choice for this. There are plenty of platforms out there, but our preference is Silverstripe because it allows us to do these things quickly, easily, um, and without huge complications. Um, another thing we're seeing more of um, with our clients and in the world in general is a greater requirement for audit history um, and compliance type applications. Who published what, where, what content was recreated, who pushed what button. Um, you know, it's something that um, we're doing a lot with um, in the financial area where, um, you know, content is important and they need to know what was published when and what was online at a certain particular time or date or country. Um, and we could manage that through Silverstripe, through the versioning, um, and it works very well for us in that space. Um, workflow is something that was you know always very simple it was very easy at the back in the day it was a case of create the content review the content publish the content um, we're now seeing extended workflows and the workflow module helps us um, create uh, a lot more complex type workflows that are required whether it's publishing out to different channels or publishing out to in different ways um, we're still seeing more requirements from our clients for workflow uh, there um, and in, into that, and this is one of the areas that was always a requirement for us, um, we're seeing a massive change in the standards for security um, and data. You know, we've always had PCI for e-commerce, um, but the requirements there are growing. Um, the OWASP um, is something that we're seeing more and more with our clients. Um, you know, nearly every site that we build now comes with a pen test or wants some form of security test for it. Um, I've got a client where we we ran a microsite amnesty, quite a large client ran a microsite amnesty for them, um, and we discovered over 100 microsites, um, all of them with some sort of security issue on them that needs fixing. Um, GDPR has been around for a little while, and it's causing even more complications for our clients clients, um, also things like cookie policies, privacy policies, and those sorts of things, um, as well as the ISO standards that we're seeing grow um, and in from there. Um, and something that we're going to see more of over the next um, 18 months, I think, is going to be OTP. I think over the course of two years, we'll see um, a lot of things using passwords will disappear and it'll be an OTP type transaction for security. Um, and all of these things, um, Silverstripe assists us with greatly. We, you know, but the fact that it's regularly pen tested by Silverstripe means that we've got confidence with the applications that we build um, and what we do there. Um, knowing that anything that we put on top, the base product, um, Silverstripe itself, is an exceptionally good, secure product. So our clients' impact on our, on our own criteria has driven and grown over the last 10 years. You know, it, we're moving more into an area where um, a lot of what we do is personalised and it has all about digital experience um, and it's about user generated content um, which Silverstripe helps us do very well. Um, one of the other things that we particularly love about Silverstripe is that we can quickly build out a proof of concept. Um, we can generally have a proof of concept out for something within, you know, days rather than weeks and months. Um, and our clients are looking for MVP as part of their agile delivery schedule now. And that in Silverstripe helps us do that extremely quickly. Our MVP times have reduced as well over the years. Um, and whereas before we, we, we had had time more to, to build stuff and then demonstrate it, we're looking to get um, an agile delivery out really quick. And Silverstripe helps us to do that. So um, in summary, um, for us, Silverstripe is still our first choice CMS. It's still the product that we choose for most of our clients. Um, there is always a edge case where they want something different. Um, but when we, when we talk to our clients as an agency um, and as a product delivery company, Silverstripe is still the cho 
choice that we make um, for all of those reasons. And our clients back that choice, you know, um, with those reasons. Typically, when they come to a pen test, they're generally pleased um, at how easy things like the pen test and security test go. Um, and because we can back that up to say it's already been through that process. Um, and that often helps with our clients. So thanks for listening. That was just a quick, um, you know, this is why we chose Silver Stripe and what we've done with it over the last 10 years. If you've got any questions, please just shout them out um, or drop me an email afterwards. I'm quite happy to talk about how we use it and what we do with it and show you some examples um, later if you want. You are muted, Sita. No. Hello. Thank you very much, Aaron, for this nice talk. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, thanks. It's uh, good to hear, um, I think, um, many of these arguments we, all, uh, we also use in client communication. And it's good to hear from a different perspective. Does anyone have a question? Ah, are you using Alexa with Silverstripe in production? Johannes is asking. Uh, no, um, we've not got to the point of using it in production. We've had a lot of talk with clients around it. What we are seeing, though, is a lot of growth in Alexa-based search requirements, so that um, not so much um, us feeding content into Alexa, but Alexa indexing our sites um, and putting content from there so it can surface that out. We've seen um, a growth in the Alexa bot um, in the search logs as well. So it's an area that our clients are stepping more into. Lots of our clients in the finance industry are really governed around compliance and what they can and can't say. So Alexa is a really difficult space for them. But we are looking at how we use that with our clients. Very interesting. Thank you very much. There are no uh, more questions, but I look forward to meet you in the Northern Creation Bar later on <laughs> or somewhere else. Thank you very much. Thank you.